This presentation provides an overview of the booting process in which an operating system is loaded from disk and starts running on a computer. Booting is the process of loading and initializing an operating system. This is the process that happens before you are able to log on to a PC. The concept of booting applies to all operating systems immaterial of the device on which it's starting. So the booting process applies to smartphones, tablets, laptops, and desktop computers, and even supercomputers. Booting operations do vary. The booting process depends on the device from which the operating system is being loaded and the operating system itself that's being loaded into memory. This presentation focuses on a pretty standard laptop or a desktop personal computer as a reference. First, when the computer is powered on, the computer gets what's known as a power good signal. In this state, the CPU is held in a reset mode. That means the CPU is not processing or trying to execute instructions. All devices get power and the devices initialize themselves. Then the memory layout is powered up, so you get a, initially a very generic memory layout. Note that this is just the memory layout. There is really no contents in RAM because it's volatile memory and any data that was in there is lost when the computer is powered down. Finally, the CPU is activated. The moment the CPU is activated, it needs instructions to execute. This is the job of the CPU. Its task is to run instructions, so it needs instructions to execute. However, RAM is volatile memory. That means any data that was in there before is lost. So when a computer is powered on, the RAM will not have any information in it. So the question becomes, how do we get instructions to the CPU so the CPU can start processing? The answer to that is to use a non-volatile memory. Currently, the technology that is used on most modern computers is called flash. So it stores data in it. Even when the power is lost, it will retain the information. The flash memory is typically hardwired onto the motherboard. And this flash memory contains the initial set of instructions that the CPU starts executing. This memory chip essentially contains a program, and this program is called a BIOS, which is an acronym for Basic Input-Output System. The BIOS is the first program that runs on a computer. It first runs diagnostics and builds an inventory of different devices that are hardwired to the computer. And this process is called Power On Self-Test, or POST. After POST, the BIOS typically presents a simple user interface to the user. This interface can be used to configure or set up some of the hardware on the computer. It can also be used to select the default device from which the operating system is to be loaded. The BIOS also provides a simple API that can be used by other programs that are loaded by the BIOS. Eventually, the operating system loaders use some of these features uh, before they start running the full operating system. It is important to understand why computers are architected and designed this way, and the reason boils down to using the non-volatile memory. The ROM that is used on computers has limited storage. Typically, it's maybe about a megabyte in size. So the BIOS program has to be small, and this program is in machine code, and it has to be compatible with the specific CPU that's being used. So, for example, if it's an Intel CPU, then the BIOS must be compatible with x86 instructions. If it is an ARM CPU, then the BIOS needs to have ARM instructions in it. The operating systems, however, are pretty large and complex programs. And they are typically stored on a variety of different hardware devices, such as say hard disks, solid state disks, um, DVD or Blu-ray disks, or even jump drives. 
and each one of these devices can have very different file systems that may require complex logic in order to read and manage data that's stored in them. Handling all of these different combinations of devices and file systems is pretty complicated and it's practically not possible to develop all the possible code in about a megabyte of, uh, mem of uh, read-only memory. Of course, keep in mind you also want to be future-proof, so if there are new file systems or operating that come in the future, we still want to be able to load and work with them. So given these constraints, the BIOS is designed a to operate a little differently. So let's look at the booting process here again. So the BIOS starts up and does POST. This is where it does the power on self-test. It then collects an inventory of different plug and play devices that are uh, on the computer. Then the BIOS, instead of trying to load the full operating system, loads only a small piece of data from the from a storage device. So specifically, BIOS loads what is known as the master boot record or MBR from a storage device. The MBR is typically stored in the first sector of a hard drive or a solid state disk or even on a jump drive. The MBR is only 512 bytes in size and the BIOS loads this 512 bytes into memory. The BIOS then runs the data that it loaded. This data from the master boot record is typically no, contains the operating system's bootloader. So the bootloader um, it starts then running to continue to load the operating system. Keep in mind that any program can be stored in the master boot record. So typically it'll be the operating system bootloader, but that's not a requirement. You can put any program you want in the um, master boot record. So typically an operating system loader is present in the MBR. The OS loader is again another piece of software that loads the actual operating system. The operating system loader may itself may use two stages in loading. This is because the initial 512 bytes can be too small even to fit the loader itself. Consequently, most modern operating systems use a two-stage loading process where there is a stage one loader that, that fits in 512 bytes and that program is only designed to load the stage two loader. The stage two loader is a more full-fledged program that can then handle the different intricacies of file systems and such and load the actual operating system into memory. Bootloaders are operating system specific. Uh, they are also specific to each device. So for example, if you're booting from a hard disk or a DVD or a USB device, you may be dealing with different kinds of bootloaders uh, depending on the operating system that's on that specific device. So the bootloader loads the operating system into memory and the OS, once it's loaded, starts running. The operating system then performs its own initializations. It in reinitializes memory, it initializes various devices and loads, loads additional software called device drivers to interact and control with these devices. Then the operating system sets up its own libraries so that other software that depend on it are ready to use them. And finally, the operating system starts up a shell. The shell can be textual or graphical. And this is the, sh the shell is the one that displays a login prompt. So you can then log on to the PC and start using the computer. Here are a couple of examples of boot sequences. We're not gonna go into too much detail on these, but only get a brief overview of them from the perspective of how they get started. Here's the GNU Linux startup process. Notice that there's a POST or the power on self-test and the BIOS then loads the master boot record. And here the Linux loader is called GRUB and GRUB starts running. Uh, stage one of GRUB then loads stage two and the stage two then finally loads the Linux kernel that then starts running on the machine and does rest of the other initializations and operations. There is a very similar process to Windows. Here is a specific one for Windows NT. Again, the BIOS starts and loads, loads the master boot record. The master boot record then loads the volume boot sector, which then loads the NT boot sector, 
which finally loads the boot manager, which is the main bootloader, which then loads the Windows executable, which then loads the kernel, the Windows kernel, and the operating system starts running. So notice that there are some similarities between these two, that they all work with the BIOS. There's a master boot record, and there is typically a two-stage bootloading that happens to load modern operating systems. Let's do a quick recap of what we reviewed in this presentation. Booting is the process of loading and starting up an operating system. The BIOS initiates the booting process by loading the master boot record from a device. Keep in mind that a two-stage bootloading may be used to load the operating system. Um, the two-stage bootloading is necessary because the master boot record has only 512 bytes of memory and a complete bootloader may not fit into those 512 bytes. The bootloader then loads the full operating system into RAM and the operating system starts running. It performs its own initializations and other startup operations. And then finally, the operating system starts a shell that displays the login prompt that allows you to log in and start working with your computer.